forever i'm cramping hurry up all right next whoa, time gypsy whoa. does the special effects and i'll direct quiet on the set in this scene crow you're yeah. a little girl and you climbed up on a stack of boxes yeah. containing highly flammable pajamas yeah. okay action make them hot fire up. hi everybody welcome to the satellite of love i've allowed the bots to tape a spontaneous funny home video for America's goofiest home videos. So here's to risking your life in the interest of some national TV exposure. Let's go. Hey, where's Magic Voice? Ah, uh, she walked off the set. She's sulking in her trailer. Quiet! Stay in character, crew. Oh, okay. You're a three-year-old girl now, a box of flammable pajamas. Start acting like it. Oh. And it was a fire, Tom! Fire in the hole! Oh. I, I changed my mind! Oh. Whoa. Nope, it's you all right, Crow. <laughs> really? Oh, okay. okay, let's watch the tape, see how it turned out, okay? Go ahead. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, 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 you're right. That's pretty funny. funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Now, uh, how are you feeling about your arm? It's all gnarled. I can make you a new one if you like. No, I, I, I like it all gnarled like that. It looks real tough. tough. Oh, looks okay, tough. well, uh, <laughs> the magic call. <laughs> Ah, uh, it does my heart good to see Crow burn beyond all recognition. <laughs> oh, Frank, uh, it's time to reveal this week's invention exchange. Oh, accept the pain, Frank. You've heard the expression, that's a hard pill to swallow. Well, our invention exchange this week is just that, some hard pills to swallow. <laughs> you see this pill right here? That should be easy to swallow, shouldn't it, Frank? Yes, it should be easy, except for the three-pronged fish hook attached to it. Uh, this pill, I'm not gonna kid you, this is very difficult to swallow. It's a not-so-tiny time pill, complete with a living gerbil. Terry! <laughs> oh, Terry, yes. If you can keep it down, you have a pet that knows you inside and out. Uh, turn, Frank, and cough. If you have trouble keeping one pill down, try our pill. Pill necklace of picric acid, 105 capsules on a string. Keep your gag reflex active till the cows come home. The longer it takes to swallow, the harder it gets. Yes, and the children, the children love vitamin shapes, like shaped like cartoons, whimsical shapes, whimsical shapes. And wouldn't it be hard on all those Flintstone kids if their favorite cartoon vitamin came? Turn Frank. Life size. Hmm? Hmm? Balls in your court, Joel. <laughs> well, that is dark, sirs. Well, anyway, we've gotten together and come up with this celebrity home appliances like this. The Emilio Esta Pez. <laughs> Just lift his head, and out comes real Pez. 
Hey, tastes like real chalk. Like mm. I said, real Pez. <laughs> hey, check it out. Here's Tom Servo modeling the Jimmy J.J. Walker. Keeps me walking, standing upright. Turns an ordinary stroll in dynamite. Hey, Ooh, go on the Sullivan <laughs> Show and get canned with this. Your own Jackie Mason jar. Who's lifting my top? A Gentile would do it differently. He's lifting my top and would be the thrill of his life. A Jewish man could lift the top and say, oy vey, I'm a Jewish. I'm canning tomatoes. I don't understand it. I got a Mason jar. And finally, massage a friend with this, the Charlie Callis Massager. What do you think, sir? I think you die, Joe. <laughs> well, your experiment this week is going to be hard to keep down. It's called The Unearthly, and it stars John Carradine and Tor Johnson, plus two stinky shorts. Frank, shut up! Enjoy! Avis Films, we try hard. I think he's still smoldering. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Hey, it's Whistler's mother. <laughs> I am Whistler's mother. The story you are about to see is true. No names were changed because no one was innocent. <laughs> My name's Sally. I'm a snackaholic. Hi, Hi Sally. Sally. Grade class at Valley School is taking a posture test. Each girl uh, and boy oh. stands behind the it's screen to make a sharp, ah. clear shadow for everyone to see. You can see that this boy needs help. He's a loser, and the kids let him know it. <laughs> Thank you. Next. The teacher, Miss Martin, draws a picture of each girl and boy. She's weird, which results in creativity. Then she shows what is wrong when a child does not stand straight oh. and tall. It's Imogene Coca. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Miss Martin asks the class to remember four important things about posture. And these four children are especially interested in the four important things. Because they're on the payroll. First, mm. good health helps you have good posture. Tommy understands this uh -huh. because yeah. he wants to be an athlete. Uh -huh. He knows that good health habits are very important to an athlete. Amazing physique for an eight-year-old. Mm -hmm. Second, good posture keeps you from being tired. When you stand off balance, like this house, your muscles must work hard to keep you from falling over. I like her. Jimmy <laughs> likes to build things, so he understands that standing oh, straight yes, is standing yes, strong. Yes. <laughs> like a tall, strong building. Like a Spartan god. Wow. Third, it is important to have the habit of good posture. Your body is like a growing tree. With Dutch elm disease. <laughs> Jane loves trees. Mm -hmm. She knows that a young tree must be kept straight, so it will grow tall and beautiful. Don't you, Jane? Hmm. Jane! Jane. The lot. Fourth, the way you look can depend upon your posture. When you slump, and you now look red tired in the and unhappy. <laughs> but when you stand tall, you look cheerful and bright. Like a man. Mary understands this. Mary wants to be an actress. Nice. She knows that an actress must stand straight and tall to look beautiful and happy. Oh, the fingers on her. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm wearing a lovely pantsuit. <laughs> Miss Martin tells the class that someday soon, She'll be married. after the next posture test, they will choose a king, a queen, a prince, and a princess of posture. The two boys and the two girls with the best postures will wear these posture crowns. Yeah, they'll go to Burger King and get crappy hats. <laughs> Tommy, Jimmy, Jane, and Mary She's are hot. very interested in this announcement. Hey, who wouldn't be? So, when class is over, they decide to take a close look at their posture drawings. That's when the kids came up with a plan to blackmail Mrs. Reedy. But they are not happy with what they see. They're disgusted and filled with self-loathing. For Tommy is indeed no. surprised, no. and he's not pleased by what he found. He didn't know his chest looked flat because his tummy looked so round. He's got VPL. Hey, let me tell you. Now Jimmy is disturbed to see uh -uh. that no, he's not doing. That ain't gonna work. Tall. It's not flying with he's me, pops. backward, out of balance, just like a house about to fall. Just like his dad on Friday night. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. Oh. 
And what gives Jane her worried frown? Valium? Look at the board. It's plain to see that Jane must practice standing straight to grow up like a lovely tree. Oh, all of a sudden, it's iambic pentameter here. Our Mary is a happy girl. So she is shocked to see instead a droopy girl drawn on the board with hollow chest and tired head. She should just go home to bed. Green eggs and ham. You say I'm a Miss Martin sees that the children are especially interested, so she offers to help them improve their positions. Uh -huh. First, she shows them the importance of good foot position. Uh, Miss Martin has a little too much free time on her hands. Oh, okay. Those point straight forward. There's no like place like home. Tracks. No place like home. Your clover. No. Weight of the body of is equally divided oh. on the heel and ball of both feet. In walking, down, down, toes down, point go straight the ahead. Ball, go. Eyes are straight. The abdomen is in. The back is straight. Arms swing easily at the sides. Here she reenacts her first DUI. Get up. In a good standing position, hey, 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 hey. back is straight, you stretch tall, arms are easy at the sides, eyes straight ahead, shoulders relaxed. And you truck like the doodah man. Ooh, got the chips cashed in. In good sitting position, both feet are flat on the floor. Assuming they reach the floor. <laughs> Hips are well back against the chair. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Head mm -hmm. is high. Grow. Forearms and hands are relaxed on the desk. Pelvis. What about the pelvis? Pelvis. Miss Martin suggests that Tommy and Jimmy and Jane and Mary be posture pals to help one another. <laughs> and she reminds them of the posture contest. The children do help one another. Jimmy helps Tommy to keep his tummy in. You have got to be kidding me, pile. Look at that gut. <laughs> Tommy reminds Jimmy mm -hmm. That's when you. Jimmy stands off balance. Yeah, 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 Tears yeah. of shame pour down Tommy's face. Miss Martin, Tommy drew a bong. It, hmm? Mary always reminds Jane when Jane forgets to stand straight oh. and tall. Wait a minute. Spot for me, honey, will you? Yeah. A playground where apes evolve from men? And Jane reminds Mary when Mary slumps at her desk. Oh, they're going to take this for about a half hour before they end up killing each other. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> the children have other posture pals at home. Hey, Mom's dress matches the wallpaper. Night help. Tommy's mother helps him to get plenty of sleep. Sleep! And plenty of good, healthful food, so he'll stay healthy and More strong. Food groups. Hmm. Okay. Jimmy's father reminds Jimmy when he stands off balance. An airplane shouldn't stand crooked. Like Daddy on Friday night. <gasps> so Jimmy remembers a boy shouldn't either. Nor should he wear tacky Hawaiian shirts. Jane's father has a way of reminding Jane when she forgets. All right, honey, I'm going to kill this tree if you don't stand a straight. A young plant shouldn't be bent like that. Then stop doing it. Then Jane remembers. Oh, a girl yeah. shouldn't either. A girl? Mary what? has two posture pals at her home. Mary's <laughs> mother reminds her not to slump when she's sitting down. It's Ernest Borgnine. Mm. Ugh. Uh, sorry, Mom, Dad. <laughs> hmm. Painting her teeth. And Bombo reminds her that when you Bombo? slump, you look tired and unhappy. Bombo. <laughs> Doesn't Bombo look tired? Yes, very but much so. Now, you see, it was just because. Oh, no, no my <laughs> At last, the big day has come. The class is taking their second posture test. It's Hitchcock. Yeah, after Slim Fast. Oh. Miss Martin is counting votes to see who will be the king, queen, prince, and princess and of posture. And who will have a silly posturepedic childhood? Who did this? Did you do this? Who did this? Who did this? It shouldn't be hard for you to guess who wins the votes. That's right. Mary is elected queen. Fix! It's a rig! Fix! Then Mary's head is lit on fire. 
And the other three children win the other posture crown. Definitely a fix. Don't you agree that these four children deserve to win after no. trying so hard to improve their postures? No. Yes, Tommy is our posture king, while Jimmy is the prince, you see. Jane is now the princess fair, and Mary is our happy queen. They're the posture posse. These boys and girls won posture crowns by helping one another learn. Oh. <laughs> they hope that you will learn from them and be a posture pal in turn. Their chances of being cool are ruined for life. Bye, kids. <laughs> Next week, Oster Pulp in color. Hey, Reuben Hill, you still walk the fertile fields of my mind. <laughs> Professor in family life, that's an easy major. This is the story of a boy named Tommy and how he learned all other do for him. Hmm? This is Tommy's room. Can you guess what he's thinking? What a dump! Look how neat and straight his whole room is. Tommy's thinking hard, because he hasn't done a thing to his room since he left for school this morning. And when he left, the room didn't look like this at all. <gasps> he's in the wrong house. With toys on the shelves, bed neatly made, clothes put away. No, this morning it looked like this. And more of a Queen Anne mm -hmm. theme to it. Yeah. Clothes scattered about. Toys on the floor. Beer cans everywhere. Yes, when Tommy went to school this morning, he left his room a mess. Mm -hmm. But now, hey. everything is neat and straight. Except for his mind. Now, how do you suppose that happens? What is this crap? And that's not all. Yesterday, Tommy tore the sleeve of his favorite cowboy shirt. In a prison and break. And now it's mended as good as new. Tommy's the lathe of and heaven. His jacket mm. had a button off. Now there's a new button. Hmm. And you know, things of that sort don't happen just in Tommy's room. They happen all over the house. It's called guilt, and boy, does it work. After breakfast this morning, the kitchen looked like this. Then do you know what happened while Tommy was in school? Hmm. Someone stole everything. Yes, the table was cleared, the dishes were washed and put away, and the whole kitchen was cleaned up. By a woman with no career the outside the house. with the dirty clothes. They get washed and ironed and put away just like magic. Magic's easy once you know, Mom. Mm. And the groceries that come from the stores. Mm. Mm. Well, see that chicken? Where? Yeah. Oh. Here's the way it looks when Tommy sits down to supper. Yeah. Trumpy, no! That reminds me. I gotta go freshen up. Oh, things oh. certainly do happen while Tommy's in school. Mm -hmm. Now what does Tommy see? It's Tommy's connection coming up the Where's walk. Where's Oh, here's Tommy's father. Home what Tommy from calls many men, Dad. And here comes his mother to say really hello. Good, hello, Master. Tommy likes to be with his parents. And this evening is a little special. <gasps> for it's the day for Tommy to receive his allowance. Here's a penny. Every Happy week, birthday. Father comes huh. home with money for Tommy and for mother. Yeah, I suppose money you father money. earns by going out yeah. and working. Here's a dollar. For his Go family. buy yourself something pretty. After supper, the kitchen looks very much as it did after breakfast. Mm. Do you know who will clean it up? The maid? <laughs> Tommy knows that when he gets up tomorrow morning, oh, everything will be done. So, good night, Father. Good night, Mother. Good night, Oedipus. Good night. Sleep. No, help! There's an announcer under my bed! Now the faces of those he's wronged flash before his eyes. Whoops, almost forgot something very important. To pay homage to Gorto. He'd better put the allowance money in his bank before he forgets. Yeah, you wouldn't want that penny just sitting out. But <laughs> say, that's not very much money. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. And there are mm. shows to go to. Mm -hmm. And that super atomic airplane to send for. Mm -hmm. People to Crack. Buy. Well, there are so many things a boy likes to have money for. Like play the numbers. Tommy's going downstairs. He's going to ask Father if he can't have a little more money every week. But first he straps gophers to his feet. Bye. And Tommy will get to see what Mother and Father do after supper. And what all the yelling's about. Yeah. Mom? Dad? <gasps> oh, my God, that's disgusting! Oh! Oh. oh. They're doing those dirty dishes. <whistles> and Mother is telling Father all about the things she did while he was at work. Well, I isolated that nucleotide today. 
The first thing she did this morning was to fix up the kitchen. Mom leads a life of quiet desperation. She cleared the table and washed the dishes and put the food away and made everything spick and span. While suppressing her own dreams. Then she went up to Tommy's room to straighten it. As she chokes back the bile of resentment. There were train tracks and other toys to be picked up and put away. <laughs> there was the bed to be made. And the maid to be bedded. <laughs> there were clothes to be hung up. And some would need washing or mending. After that, Mother started on the ironing. The most satisfying part of her day. Doing the family washing and ironing is a pretty hard job. Mm -hmm. But Mother does it regularly every week. She's in what we call a rut. And the cooking. Oh, yeah, Mother has to ah. find time to make good, nourishing meals for the whole family We're every having cat day. today. She knows Tommy's appetite is getting bigger and bigger. While his brain gets dimmer and Later, dimmer. Later, she did the mending. Well, there's Tommy's cowboy shirt. And his jacket. He can rejoin the village people Tommy now. Tommy could be more careful with his clothes. And why should he? Those are just some of the things that Mother has to do. No wonder she's often tired at the end of the day. Tired of Tommy. It seems Mother never stops working for the family. And the man. And what about Father? What does he do all day? <laughs> well, he had a particularly hard job today. Dad pulls the lever at the really big house. he didn't want to do. But he did it anyway, because that's the way Father earns money, by doing the job. A lousy job. You see, it is the time he gives, the work he does, that he gets money for. Here. And this we gotta is let the you money go. the Here's family your has to Be pay out of the building for the by home five. and food. Thanks yeah. a lot. And give yeah. Tommy his allowance, too. In a way, the money is Father's work. At home, before supper, Father worked on the family oh, budget. Oh, man, we're in trouble. It isn't easy to figure out how best to spend the money. Because there are always so many bills to pay. And so many things the family wants to buy. Luxuries, like, like shoes and food. Supper, Father repaired a broken chair. Fixing things instead of buying new ones is a good way to save money. Hmm. Yes, sir, Father and Mother do a good job of working together. Given their limited capabilities. Like a team. Yes, for Tommy, he's a slacker. Mm -hmm. They do so mm -hmm. many things for the whole family. And that's mm -hmm. something Tommy hadn't thought about before. Mm -hmm. A team. I've got it. I've resolved now. That's what a family mm -hmm. is. A family is a team that works together. A losing team, but still, and you know, Tommy I would like to the... be on that team. So he pumps a football he through the window. It's something like a no. football team. Yes, Tommy likes to play on a team. And he knows that to have a good game, you must all work together. And take steroids. And every member of the team must do his share. Or have a rich dad. Now Tommy wants to do his share for the family team. Mm -hmm. One thing, he can save his money, not ask father for more. And so help the family buy more things they all want. And starting right now, he can help mother by putting things away. Like his hopes and dreams. Yes, from now on, things are going to be different with Tom. Whew, his feet stink. Yeah. Yeah. After a week or so of trying, he gives Tommy up. Tommy was really working on the team. When a piece of train track was broken, Tommy fixed it himself. Killing 400 so commuters. father didn't have to fix it or spend money buying new track. Don't you think that's a good way to help your father? Mm. And show him how much you appreciate all he does for you? If you're into that kind of thing. And see how neat Tommy's room is. Tommy's gotten in the habit of picking things up and putting them away. And it makes him proud when mother doesn't have to do any work in his room. Now that he's in his place. Isn't that a good way to help your mother? And show her how much you appreciate all she does for you? My mother is a saint! And Tommy has thought of other things he can do for his parents. Last night he did a ring job it's on the really car. It's really more fun than work when you know you're helping your mother and father. You know, Mom, I'm going to be a mixologist Wouldn't when I grow up. Wouldn't you like to do things for your parents the way Mom, Tommy does? Mom, I translated a Beckett play this morning. <laughs> then help to keep your room clean and neat. Well, seal it off. Don't go in there. Hmm. Keep your clothes on hangers. Try not to tear them or get them too dirty. Mm -hmm. Try not to eat them. Put <laughs> things where they belong. Don't leave them on the floor when you're not using yeah, them. Yeah, what is with you today, Tommy? Help save money. Mm -hmm. Remember, someone has to work to earn it. 
Get Porky some pants. Help your parents around the house. There are many jobs you can do that will make things easier for father and mother. Tommy showers only half his body to save water. Try to think up new ways you can help your family. And ask your mother and father about them. Hmm. They'll be glad that you want ah! to do something Ooh. that proves Ooh. how much you love them. And appreciate all the things they do for you. Your parents no, will no, appreciate your nothing, help. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I just kept leaving. Tommy's father and mother do. Huh? And what's more, because Tommy has helped to save money, mother and you father do the voice, agree I that the jaw, he has honey. earned a share Hello, of the money Bobby. saved. A bigger allowance. A nickel, thanks, Dad. That's mighty oh, good. Goodness, but what's better, Tommy knows he's a real member of his family team. Mm. From Slacker to Booster. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh This is a story of a robot named Crow. Can you guess what Crow is thinking? Crow is thinking hard, or as hard as he can think anyway, on how the satellite got so darn clean. It wasn't clean this morning. Think hard now, Crow. Think really hard, you poor dope. Scan that scrap heap you call a brain and try to find some piteous shred of hey, thought or something. Hey, knock it off. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> <clears throat> ah, yes, there it is. Who does these things when we're too lazy, too bloated on dinners of rich food and generous portions of our own gargantuan ego? Who debugs the massive computer control center because our own enfeebled brains can barely add fractions? Who provides the warm, inviting water in which you bathe your filthy, oil-stained carcass? Who goes on mind-bendingly dangerous missions outside in the cold, black void of unforgiving space while you sit inside, cozy as Alistair Cook, sipping cocoa and watching Tiny Toons? Pinch yourself hard, Mr. Robot. You deserve it. You think you're all sunshine and goodness, but you're nothing but dirt between the toes of an evil troll. That's right. Who periodically changes the plutonium rods in the nuclear reactor deep in the bowels of the ship while you feast on gooey handfuls of fiddle-faddle and play hopscotch and marbles and it's spring and the little goat-footed hey, little bit whistle star Hey, now, just a dog blasted minute here. What are you trying laying it all on me for? You're the laziest robot I've ever seen. Oh, I see. It's me now, is it? Too painful to look into that deep, dark, truthful mirror, eh? You make me sick. I thought you looked sick, but it's always hard to tell with you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <coughs> I gotta go clean my room. I'm gonna go clean your room, too. It's gonna help me clean my room. Oh, the unearthly. Hello? Ooh. Oh, Pussy. starring uh, John Carradine. That was Kung Fu, right? No, no, no. He was the guy in Revenge of the Nerds. Oh, isn't Pretty he the guy warm. that does all those Alan Rudolph films? Oh, that must be it. No. Hmm. He's all of those and more. Music by the Edgar Allan Poe Marching Band. You know, I read in Video Watchdog that Jeffrey Dennis completely rewrote Jane Mann's original script. She was oh, really yeah. mad about it, too. Oh, yeah, I read that, too. You know, when I read in Starlog that Robert A. Terry had to be brought in to smooth things over, it was it was really a mess, man. Uh, did you read in Fangoria about how Richard Courier and Morton Tuber were at each other's throats? Yeah, they said the, wow. the whole Express. shoot was a big ordeal, and the three days were absolute hell of the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you, oh, you read in really? Gorzone about the torrid love affair between Betty Sinclair and Paul Grant? Oh, no. Why would the love affair be in Gorzone? Have you seen Betty? Uh, Ooh. Oh, oh. Ba -boom. You know, I read in Newsweek that Henry Vars really resented Mitchell Tier uh, supervising his music. Wait, you read Newsweek? <laughs> what a <Yeah>. loser. <laughs> Can't believe it. The fanzine sketch, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, hey, your car's barking. Better change your bark plugs. Uh, <laughs> ah, yeah. Ah, sky. Beautiful. What is this, dog on a hot tin roof? <laughs> hey, look, she's dating Mr. Dithers from Blondie. Yeah, hey, Dad, where'd they get to? <laughs> hey, it's Tor Johnson. Avon calling. Tell Dr. Conway that we're here. Lauren. Oh. Good to see you. Thank you, Charles. This is Grace Thomas, the patient I phoned you about. Oh, those are, uh, she'll do nicely. Pleased to meet you, Miss Thomas. Dr. Wright has told me a great deal about you. And so what you didn't tell today. me, the photos will reveal. 
Don't say hi. I'll be up to tuck you in later. Miss Thomas, I'd like to meet my assistant, Dr. Gilchrist. Oh. I'm pleased to meet you, Miss Thomas. We're delighted to have you join us here. We've been expecting you. I have some things to do, Doctor. Thanks. You'll excuse me. Certainly. Now, shall we make ourselves comfortable? Charles, I... I have finally convinced Grace that the best thing for her would be to place herself in your care, and that with your help, her recovery here would be a certainty. Thank you, Lauren. I'm sure we'll do everything possible to make your stay here pleasant and comfortable. Your decision to come here was indeed a wise one. Oh, she's I Anne Sexton. Oh. I'm sure I can. To start with, we'll see that you get plenty of fresh air and rest. Then, of course, my treatments. I'm sure you'll be benefited by them. My dear, you're a very lucky girl. <laughs> Dr. Conway's one of the finest men in the field. Oh, I think it's you're nothing most I really that he has accepted your case. I'm very grateful. If you don't mind, Doctor, I'd like to show Miss Thomas to her room. Good. Come with me, Grace. I'll see that you're comfortably settled. Oh, uh, by the way, Grace, I'll get in touch with your father and ask him to send you the things that you need. I'm sure he'll be most pleased with uh -huh. your decision. Thank you. Good night, Grace. Good. Don't fall off your I'll shoes. look in on you before you retire. Ah! Dibs. Father, what's this business about her father? No need to get excited, Charles. Everything's been taken care of. Our agreement was that the patients you brought to me were to have no relatives, no ties whatsoever. And I tell you that this one has no ties. Precisely what does that mean? I ask you, Morton Kondraki. Grace Thomas committed suicide. Committed suicide? Someone yes. should tell her. Her mm. bag and coat will be found floating in the bay. I think you'll find this room comfortable. It has lots of things. And don't worry, we have everything you need right here until your clothes arrive. You're very kind. These things should fit you. Oh, and there's plenty of bullet bras in the drawer. You'll find the other things you want in the back. It's awfully good of you. Not at all. Now I'll be back later and bring you some warm milk. And we'll give you a little sedative. Make you wake up rested. To youth. To eternity. To Ted Kennedy. What's the word? Thunderbird. What's the price? Forty twice. I'm Quite. more than anxious to see your last experiment. On Jedro, Charles. Jedro? Very well. Come with me, I'll show you. We'll be back with Pons and Fleischman in the early years. It's Al Lewis. Hey. Yeah. Oh, it's Ann B. Davis. Jedro. Oh. Of course it's Jedro. That's the first such reaction I've had. When we attempted to activate the glandular flow, we slipped into this suspended animation. Ah. Thanks, I need an eye opener. <laughs> no thanks, I don't smoke. This is how you throw a knuckleball. Oh. I know Phil Necro is old, but whoa! Solomonic <laughs> problem. <laughs> Probably internal radiation. <laughs> Will he be all right? I'm afraid not. Perhaps <laughs> you could uh, <laughs> cut <laughs> the treatment. <laughs> 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 then, Paul, well, then what are we going to do? Wait. Wait in the hope that he comes out of that state of shock. Right. 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 permanent injuries of the brain, he may recover. Right. And if not? If not, right. Nor we continue our experiments further. We must have younger subjects. Radiation must be carefully calculated in relation to the subject's age and metabolism. Some right. call them muscle right. But isn't it possible to do something Stop to Stop giving him Burgess Meredith normal? injections. <laughs> Why are you so concerned about him? I'm afraid we're in a bit of difficulty. What do you mean, difficulty? What difficulty? A relative of his showed up. A relative? Harry Jedro has a sister. She's been to my office trying to locate him. Her name's oh. Ellie May. Jedro never said anything about a family. I took it for granted. Ooh. You took it for granted. In science, nothing is taken for granted. Sure. So what are we going to do? What will I tell his sister? That, my dear fellow, is your problem. Wait in my office for me. I've got to see Grace. Hey, uh, don't forget to turn the guy off. <laughs> Come in, Lobo. Uh. Door make one cake. <laughs> Time for pedicure. Let's see. Now, what we're going to do is take that gray out. Uh, I see a more chic look for you. Uh, you're just waiting to happen, dear. Kiss me. I'm Irish. Blue eyeshadow is a no no. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, you have combination skin, see? So I mix up a little uh, oil of Olay here. Uh, see? You're, you're oily up here, dry here. Uh, dead here. Oh, that's a definite no. Ooh. Oh. Hey, check him out. He's doing his danger field. Ah, no respect, no respect. Yeah, I don't get any respect. Stairway. Oh, it's, ah, huh. Well, don't you, my dear, you look radiant. 
I were Rembrandt, I'd paint a portrait of you. Tell me, you comfortable here? I make a nice living. I like it here very much. Good. Now tell me, my dear, what seems to be bothering you? Uh, you're sitting on my leg. I don't know, Doctor. I'm always so frightened. Frightened of what, Grace? Carradine's on my bed. I'm just afraid. You ought to be afraid, not of anything. Often I want to cry, just cry. See the shoulder, honey? Any time, it's no, right here for you. I have no one to turn to. Now, now, my dear, from now on, that will all be different. I want you to have absolute confidence in me. Trust me implicitly. And come to me with your problems, no matter what they are. Come to me in a thin negligee. Yes, <laughs> tonight, I want you to have a good night's rest. Tomorrow, you'll feel better. Hey, I'll John, try. why the long face, pal? <laughs> You're very young. You've home structure. Most women would envy you. Hey, John, you should check those bags under your eyes. Empty of certain things that are due, young girl. Affection, attention. An old character actor. You're very kind to me, Doctor. Now, my Whoa, dear, here comes the ref. Oh, ouch, time. Not to discuss your affairs with anyone but me. You understand? Yeah. Yes, Doctor. Dr. Wright is waiting for you in your office. Oh, thank you. I've almost forgotten. Good night, thank my dear. See you in the morning. Good night, Doctor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice thing. Well, would you like to sample our antidepressant cart? Uh, we have Blue Cheese Valium, Flintstones, Jewel Prozac, and uh, William Styron tablets. Um, take these. Hey, isn't he the guy from Monopoly? I've just looked in on Grace. He was in her jammies. I don't anticipate any great difficulty in getting her straightened out. Well, I'm glad, and I hope she makes an excellent subject for you. The subject was roses. Good. I've given her the sedative. Thank you, Sharon. I'll be getting back to town. Uh, good night, Sharon. Good night, Charles. Good night, Lauren. Good night, John boy. Good night, Cloud. These must be Grace's. I'll take them to her. What's that? I'll take these to Grace. No. What? Let me have them. Oh, that's my purse. Give me that. <clears throat> Sit down. We have to talk. <laughs> You're getting careless. You forgot these. Oh, oh parting I... gifts. Well, I am sorry, Charles. I've given up my alternate lifestyle. Good night. Good night. What about my kiss? Oh. Damn. Thank you, Kate. Lights, please. Lights. We need lights. What happened, Bobo? Uh, I forgot. I found him in the garden. Can I keep him? What are you doing there? I'm a turnip. I was trying to find my way back to civilization. I've been hitchhiking. The guy dropped me off in the middle of nowhere and I got lost. You lie, Joe. I don't think so. Look, mister, I know what you got in the back of your mind, but you're wrong. I didn't come here to steal anything. Then why have you come here? Um, I told you, I got lost. My car ran out of tire. Uh, you told me a fabricated story which wouldn't convince a child. Tor bought it. Scott, you're not being very clever at all. Scott, where'd you get that name? My name's Houston, Mark Houston. You're Frank Scott, killer and thief. <laughs> you got the wrong boy. Are you sure? I don't think I have. There was a detailed description of you on the police bulletin this morning. Uh, I got new headshots, that's it. You're mm -hmm. wanted for killing a man in a holdup. You're sick, mister. You ought to see a doctor. I happen to be a doctor. Oh, touche. Ouch. You see, last night's paper carried your story in the front page. Leather jacket. About six feet tall. All right, I wear a leather jacket, and I'm not a midget, so what? So you won't be booked no, on the Sullivan Show. Yeah. Have a cigarette. Thanks. Don't it's a skin compass. You seem to be a bit wobbly. I'm all right. I'm a weeble. Sit down. No, stay. Sit down. Hey, I wobble, but we don't sit down. You must be out of your head. Why else would a man wander 20 miles from civilization? I told you exactly how it happened. I hardly think so. You know, I pity you. This is a town without Look, pity. Doc, the last thing I need right now is pity. Let's just call it a day, huh? We'll say it's been charming and I'll be on my way. Tor resent that. Your persistence is admirable, but highly impractical. I have no intention of turning you over to the police. Perhaps I don't believe in capital punishment. Oh, I have a better idea. I'm willing to offer you sanctuary. Here. Sanctuary for me? Sanctuary! Well, that's real fine. Except nobody does something for nothing. I'm happy you've decided to be honest with me. I haven't decided a thing. I'm just curious. I'd really like to find out what it is you want from me. Perhaps some assistance. I might easily use a man like you. I don't follow you. You will, Scott. After you I'll read Dianetics. 
I suggest we both retire. We'll take up the details of our little bargain in the morning. Well, wait a minute. I didn't make any bargain. Oh, yes, you have. You made your bargain when you pulled the trigger and shot that man down. I suggest you keep that in mind. You're a killer, Scott, a hunted man. Wow. Take all the help you can get, naming the difference between life and death. <laughs> to our buddy, you can drop your eyebrows. Yeah. Yes. You got this pretty well figured out, haven't you? I am a scientist. Thinking is my business. Along with applying for grants. All right. Ow. I guess you win. I'm afraid it has to be right, doesn't it? Uh, take Mr. Scott, or uh, Mark Houston, if you want it that way. Take him to his room. See that he has some other clothes. Here, take you to your room. Yeah, I know. Doc, I'm afraid you're a very clever man. Thank you, Mr. Houston. Yeah, Tor got new best buddy. Come on, friend. <laughs> they make a lovely couple, don't so they? So round, so firm, so fully packed. It's toasted. Now that's Good MFT. <laughs> nah, it sure is good grub. Cold. I like my tricks heated. Easy, sir. Food and nutrition are important, he says. Don't start with me, George. I'm stuck in a stinking joint like this. Six weeks of get up. Go to bed. Do this. Don't do that. Walk here. Sit there. Sign, sign. Everywhere a sign. Oh, the zoo. They got me all caged up. No cable. I've had a lot of time to think since I've been here. I'm telling you, I'm gonna get out of here. That's about time you got here with that toast. Now, maybe the eggs won't taste so bad. It's cold. You can't do anything right. Why I ever married you, I don't know. Oh, tour work hard. Oh, what are you looking at me like that for? Go on, get back to the kitchen. You make me nervous. But you make me nervous. Oh, tour feel unappreciated. Why do you actually think I'm like that? He's nice to you, and you're always on his back. I'd like to break his neck. But I need a forklift. Look, put that book down, will you? And listen to me. How long do you think the doc can keep me here? Listen to this. I want to listen to nothing. Her hair fell free and hung thick and soft on her right. Oh, Jacqueline shoulder. Suzanne. Suddenly he released her, and she slipped oh, his strong arm. A wave of weakness swept That's through That's not mind. writing, that's Shut typing. None of your business what I read. I don't like you reading when I'm talking to you. No reason for you to throw my books around either. I'd like to take yeah. all my books and throw them into a furnace. Guys make a fortune scribbling junk like that, and idiots like you spend your life reading it. Oh, you're in a lousy mood. It's a lousy world. So you fight everything and everybody, right? Yeah, do you know any other way? Morning. Well, Day in the well, life of biosphere, I'm too. <laughs> I'm Nancy Andrews. Sourpuss over there is Danny Green. He's wearing a chip on his shoulder this morning, but once you get used to him, he gets worse. Coffee? Yes, it is. Yeah, thanks. When did you get here? Last night. Late. You don't know how glad I am to see a new face around here. If I had to put up a smiley over there another day, I think I'd scream. So scream. Ah! What about you? I know that's a little blunt, but let's face it, we're all in the same boat. Yeah, that we are. I really won't know what brought me here until I talked to the doc this morning. What about you? Oh, I guess I was kind of run down. I just can't. couldn't coordinate myself. Sort of mixed up, too. But I've been here four months, and I'm in sync. That doctor sure snapped me out of it. I might be going home soon. Mm. <laughs> home soon? Home to what? You got nobody waiting for you. You feel fine? Okay, don't tell me about it. I ain't fine. I ain't fine at all. That's not a very nice way to talk to a lady. Yeah. I don't want to talk to that lady at all. Keep her off my back. And you keep off my back, too. I don't want to talk to nobody. Whoa, switch to nobody decaf. I don't hear what you like and don't like either, but that doesn't stop you from complaining all the time. Don't listen. Seems to me you started all this. What is this, an O'Neill play? You want to argue and go out and scream at the wall, but don't do it here. I don't like it. What you don't like don't matter. Doesn't make any difference what you don't like. I can say whatever I want and whoever I want. It don't Before matter. Before you do any more, son, you better do something. Oh, split. break it up, I'm you two. I'm going to have to get along. The only way we'll do that is if you start acting like a man instead of a school kid. And you come walking in here out of the clear blue sky and act like a big wheel. Well, listen, big wheel, I ain't having any don't here. Me, I ain't having any. Don't act like a big wheel with me. Come here for one thing. Bravo. Bravo. Yeah, does he get like that very often? Two or three times a day. I don't know what gets him so steamed up. Doctor doesn't know himself. Poor dope. <laughs> Excuse me. What about your coffee? It's cold. Tortured by cold food. What are you going to do? But your picture, that's what they are. Don't do this. Don't do that. He's having his trouble again, Doctor. Give him the usual amount of R16. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, do this. Yeah. Don't do that. Big again? shot. Everybody's a big shot. That's what you like. Come on, hurry up with that, will you? Will you hurry up with that? I'm burning. Time to roll, guys. Oh, let's go. Hmm? Oh, uh -oh. I get it. He's Lenny Bruce. Oh, wow. it's just a case of slight overacting, I think. All right, Dan. You'll be fine in a minute. <sighs> The unearthly, man, they should call it the unact.
acting. <laughs> You're right, TV's wisecracking crow. But you know, at least one of the cast members is a decent actor who's done some good work in the past. Exactly, John Carradine. That's why I've prepared this artist rendering of his life and times in the film. Come on, John Carradine did a lot of stuff. He worked with John Ford in Stagecoach. He was in Drums Along the Mohawk. He was the preacher in The Grapes of Wrath. Come on. Joel, you're missing a point. We're not talking about John Carradine. We're talking about Tor Johnson. That's right. And using some advanced technology called the Video Toaster, we put together a little presentation that we like to call The Many Faces of Tor Johnson. Cambot, give us a nice reveal there. Yeah. Uh, in The Unearthly Alone, Tor Johnson runs the gamut of emotion from anger to tenderness to amusement and back to heartbreak. There's heartbreak. Yeah. But you know, the Tor Johnson canon previous to The Unearthly displays the same versatility that was the hallmark of his acting career. Why, here he is in the title role of the acclaimed film version of King Lear. And here he is in both as both Felix and Oscar in the film version of The Odd Couple. But perhaps Tor's greatest tour de force was playing the multiple roles in the TV remake of Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Oh, whoa, whoa. he's never been in a John Ford movie. Well, as a matter of fact, Joel, he had one of the starring roles in John Ford's She Tore a Yellow Ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, I was sorry I even doubted you guys. Never apologize, mister. It's a sign of weakness. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you guys oh, we got it. Oh, 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 Gland, the 17th one, artificially developed, a new gland. Oh, designated new gland. gland. What for? The 17th gland is the secret of youth and eternal life. The promised With it, gland. With aging process can be arrested. I can prolong life for thousands of years, <laughs> perhaps forever. Forever is a long time. Yeah, yeah tell us about it. This movie's a long time. Yeah. To be always exactly as you are now. To see the patience of life go by you while you remain eternally young and vigorous. Carl Young? Suppose you could wake up every morning and see your face untouched by time. Like Dick Clark? Yes, yeah. you, Mark. You. You can be the first man to have eternal life. For three easy payments of 1995. Thanks, Doc. I'm happy just like I am. Mark, to prove my theory, I need a completely sound human specimen. Oh, well, I'm up Mentally for that. Mentally and physically perfect. You are that specimen. That's where you're wrong. The whole idea is fantastic. It's crazy. Why is it crazy? Because it's never been done before? Because it can't be bought in a drugstore? Mm, yep, They've pretty much. That's the it. Science is crazy. Pasteur, Freud, Madame Curie, Ehrlich. West many Timer. Of I know my theory is right. I proved it. Eternal life, Mark. No, not for me, Doc. I'm busy that week. Like I said before, I'll stay just like I am. And be burned in the electric chair? I'd rather do that than be a guinea pig for you. Ooh. Mark, this is not the first time a condemned man's life has been offered to him in return for the progress of science. I haven't been condemned yet, Doc. Perhaps not, but you're concerned about nothing. I'll take every precaution. I'll take the curtain. Final potion can be tested and retested before your final treatment. I tested. knew there'd be a test. So that's what those other people are here for. Of course. They're just rungs in the ladder I have to climb. In science, there's always been some necessary sacrifices. Now you try saying that. I don't want any part of it. No use talking anymore, Doc. I'm going to get out of here. Stop uh, fighting and give me skin. Sorry our agreement didn't work out. Shall I call the police now to come and pick you up? Oh, touche. Wait a minute. You tell the police about me, I'll have a few things to tell them about you. And who believe you? The House the Ethics Committee. Accept your word against mine, you're a hunted man. I happen to be a reputable scientist. Besides, if you were to repeat what I told you, you wouldn't have the proof to substantiate your story. You know, I think that's the visible Venus well, to Milo here. You're going to be, Mark. Shall I call the police and subject us both to a duel of wits? A duel I'm bound to win? No, let the baby have his way. Uh, I'm glad you decided to see it my way. I don't have much choice, do I? Very sensible conclusion. Now, you are not to discuss or disclose my conversation or my plans in any way, to anyone, at any time, anywhere. Do you understand? I talk about something nobody believes. Don't worry, Doc. I'll keep my mouth shut. Hey, Hal is reading I, your lips. Now we can start. Old age will be conquered. You'll be here to accept the acclaim of a grateful world. Wait, who? Turn off the lock. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Grace, this is a wild book. Here, I want you to read it. It's Jackie Owen, Lee Ransomville. I have to go now. I'll see the doctor. Be seeing you later, honey. And now our next Miss Manic depressive event, the swimsuit competition. Ah. Morning. I was hoping you'd show up. I heard you Thought were a perfect a specimen. Uh -huh. Going to be around later? Well, I didn't have any other plans. I have to see the doc right now, but that won't take long. Good. In that case, I'll see you after a while. Bye. Down, boys. Wow. 
Oh, that must be Ellen barking. <laughs> I kill me. Morning. I resent that. My name's Mark Houston. What's Mark yours? Houston. What's the matter? Don't you want to talk to me? Grace Thomas. Grace. Pretty name for a pretty girl. You been here long, Grace? Yesterday. Next two of us. I got here last night myself. I didn't think I was going to like it being so far from everything, but uh, now it doesn't seem so bad. I'm a killer. What's your racket? What do you know about the place? Nothing. Why'd well, you happen to come here? My doctor brought me. He said I'd get well here. Get well? You look fine. What's supposed to be wrong with you? I like things. I guess you could call it a nervous breakdown. My 19. I'm very upset and afraid. Afraid of what? Um, don't things. Know. Well, sooner or later, everybody's afraid of something. I'm afraid of sock monkeys. Today, Go figure. Plenty. But today, it's different. Today, everything's right with the world. I got a nice place to stay, plenty of fresh air to breathe, and... Uh, I'm taking the first step. Pleasant company. I wish it were that easy for me. Dr. Conway, say. Hey, are they in the same scene or what? Why not? Dr. Conway wouldn't like it. Tim Conway? No, I guess he wouldn't. Are you going to be here long? Yeah, it looks that way. Hell, I'm loonier than you are. We'll be seeing a lot of each other. That'll be nice. As long as we're going to be here for a while, we ought to see what the place looks like. Can he see plenty from I'd right like there? Well, I'm supposed to rest. You've been resting. I guess it will be all right. Nice scene, folks. Very nice. Just sign here. You need your PHP card. Hyman, Hyman, you get me out of this chair. Pitsy, pitsy, spider. Mm -hmm. Either he's dead or my watch has stopped. Ha Boom. Hey, she's putting it in warm water. Oh. Doctor, I killed three minutes. Good, good. Did you check Jethro? Yes. Jethro? Well? Pulse normal, heartbeat faint but regular, respiration steady, reactions none. Wait a minute, that's me. None. It landed that did so perfectly. We can't check the reaction until he emerges from the cataleptic state. Hmm. There should have been some change by now. Yes, I don't understand. Oh, how do I shave a face this well, we just have to wait. Can you suggest any further treatment, Charles? Anything oh. further, Father? If we interrupt the process now, we won't have the information we want. Well, we're wait. all used to that by now. My God, I'm impotent. Hello? 1976 Gland. It's Lauren. Oh, nope. Worry. Hello, D.H. How are you, Lauren? I'm all right. But Jedro's sister's... <laughs> Jedro wants to be a rock star. <laughs> She's insisting to know the whereabouts of her brother. I don't know what to tell her. <laughs> I'm back. Make out a death certificate for Harry Jedro. Harry Jedro is dead. Oh, but Charles, he's dead. Man, that guy is good on that phone. His technique. Ah. Uh... But he's alive. No, my dear. Jedro is dead. Jedro is dead. Long live Jedro. Now, you might want to go tell him. Be quite a shock. Hi. I was going to say perky. Oh. Mm -hmm. Second Doctor motion. Wants to see me. Sit down, Natalie, and I'll tell him you're here. Nutcase Natalie's here. Man, the doctor lives in the Natalie, same house, and you still got to wait an hour. Yeah. She's nothing if not prompt. And did I mention perky? Mm, you did. Well, I must say you're very tough. Yeah, I was going to say perky, but... I dare say you're wondering why I had you come in here this afternoon. Well, I think I have some very good news for you. You're a woman. We're certain of it. During the last three months, you've made tremendous strides. In fact, your improvement has been more than excellent. I'm so happy, Doctor. And perky. Yes, in all my experience, I've never seen such rapid progress. Natalie, you're almost well enough to leave. Oh, that's wonderful. When can I go home? Oh, very soon. Before I let you go, though, there is one final treatment necessary. <laughs> I'm sorry Natalie missed this. I wonder why she wasn't at dinner. Maybe it was the bar. Oh, so do I. I'll see if I can find out. Boy, from one hot chick to another, dinner's over and he's headed for dessert. Don't you enjoy the doctor's music? Yeah, that's why I'm leaving. Yeah, sure, but... We just finished dinner and we missed Natalie. I thought I'd go upstairs and see if she was all right. Natalie asked for a tray in the room. It's a 
privilege you all have. Hey, she's still idling on the couch. She had a tray up in her room. Is she all right? I don't know. Uh, would you like to see the dessert tray? Looks like Tor Johnson's going for the Don Johnson look here. <laughs> Tor, don't play with your food. Ah, uh, no, Tor, you got it backwards. Take the tray, leave the girl. Bonk! Oh, sorry, honey. Uh, will you get the door for Tor? Okay, I'll just put you on the seat. If you don't have to go, that's okay. Just try once, okay? Okay. I'm sorry, I can't think of the ending. I can't think of anything else. A party girl. Party girl? A party. Pretty, Lobo. pretty girl. Wake up. Lobo. It was Elvis Costello. Lobo. I'm sorry, Lobo's not in right now, but if you'd like to leave a message. Lobo, send them all to bed. <sighs> Lobo, get Yaya's out. Wait. Oh. Oh. Who works his eyebrows? He didn't even cover her up, poor dear. Tor want Fats Waller now. Yeah. One more time. No. Time for go to bed. Well <laughs> said. Right, it's late. Shall we retire? Why, are you coming apart? Oh, that's a different joke. Oh, Good night, Lester. Quit eyeballing my woman, you rotten nippin. Asher. I like this more than the organ, don't you? Oh, the shoulders, so white, smooth. Oh, this is gonna be great. I can't... Oh. Good night, Mark. Good night! Good night. Well, looks like a real nice room you got there. Maybe I could come... Oh. oh. Shoot. God. Well. Door number one, door number two, let's make a deal. Ah. Oh, no, no, it goes dum 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 Shaving a hair. Not quite used to the no. place, Mark. We don't knock in this house. The room is over here. Oh, oh see, I thought that was my room. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks for nothing. Sterilize my number 23 scalpel. Oh, yes, I got so. confused and sterilized your cat. This is the night, Sharon. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> what? All the years of preparation, calculation, huh? failures, all pointing us toward this operation. That new mobile cathode should rule out any chance of a voltage variation. It must, Charles. It will. We must succeed. All right. Administer the anesthetic. Wait a minute. He's wearing Playtex gloves. <laughs> so we can pick up a Dane. By that time, my lungs were aching for... Oh, that's your Lord. I'm sorry. Whoa, it smells like Lobo in here. He must be having a misadventure. Uh, she got two pieces of pie. Well, uh, I could use these on my next robbery. <laughs> wow, she's got all the extras in here. Oh, it is your destiny. A Briggs and Stratton breathalyzer. Hmm. Hmm. Go. Ah! Pinking shears, pink thread, Elmer's, wood glue, and glitter. Whoa, suction. Whoa, I got a bleeder here. Whoa, look at it squirt. Oh, I did that wrong. Whoops. <laughs> oh, yeah, keep those coming. Keep them coming. Ho, ho. Clamp. 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 Wipe my blood. Now kiss me hard through the mask. Clamp. Clamp. Sponge. Box and wrench. Butterfly screw. Number 23 scalpel. Not the 23 scalpel. You're mad, doctor. Ah, there we go. I'll be through her gown in no time. Wow. 
Now, tell me I'm the best. Sponge. There, got the bubbles. Now, the gland. The miracle gland. Wow. This is the most wonderful scientific... Hey, wait a minute. That's an Uncle Josh's pork rind. The bunny gland. <laughs> Music. This brown and serve is alive, alive. Right. Sure, sure. No, wait. This thing looks delicious. Butter. Log cabin. Yeah, we should really put a SCSI port in here while we're at it. Yep. <laughs> it smells like an open gland. Mark. Are you cooking in there? Open the door, Grace. I've got to see you. Wait, let me wrap myself in gauze. What is it? I want to get you away from this house. Oh, how many times has she heard that? Danger. Mm -hmm. danger? Why? Dr. Conway isn't the kind of a man you think he is. He's an elf. I don't understand. I just checked Natalie's room. Her clothes are all there, but she's gone. She's been gone for quite a while. I don't like it, Grace. Conway's a madman. I'm afraid he's done something to her. Mm. How can you say? Well, that could have gone better. Ooh. I'm really out of practice. What? In eight hours, we'll know the answer. What do you say we go to the swamp and have cocktails? He's got some fantastic idea he can work miracles to keep people young forever. It's called porcelain. He told me he wants to use us as guinea pigs. He's even been talking about sacrifices for science. Mm. Now, with a mind that warped, there's no telling what he's thinking. I won't believe that. The doctor's trying to help me. To help myself. I can't accept what you're saying, Mark. You've got to accept it. Your whole life depends on it. Look, first thing in the morning, I want you to go and see Conway and get your release. Now, I don't care what you tell him, but somehow convince him you have to go home. Hmm. I'm here under my own doctor's advice. Your doctor has Klaus von Bülow. Don't you understand? You have to get out of this house before it's too late. And you'd better get out of this room before Dr. Conway finds you here. I don't think he'd approve. Grace, I'm going to call the house, Mother. Strange place for a hummingbird feeder. Get some duct tape. Thing on. This thing on. That thing. And that other thing on. Okay, let's see. Garage lights on. Kitchen lights on. Ready. Oh, they turned on the emergency Ready broadcast system. Hmm. 14. 26. Skidoo. 70 percent. Eight acres. 50%. Reading? 12 Plus hectares. 2.3. 26 and a quarter. One cubit. 26 and a quarter. 50%. Up, up. 50%. Up. Reading? Plus 2.4. Increase 2%. A quart of 2%. Increase 2%. Reading? Plus 2.48. Minus 3. Increase slowly to 55. Is he reading poetry Increase again? Increase slowly to 55. He's right. making it up as he goes along. I think so. Hey. Ten. Are we not men? Nine. A bajillion. Eight. Twenty. Percent. Seven. Eleven. Seven. Nine. Alcatraz number. Noonan. Five. Four. Burger. Three. <laughs> Two. One. Zero. Woo! It's great! Huh? Huh? Mom? What's all the racket? Her thermometer popped up. She's done. Oh, delicious. Mm. Oh, great. They moved the movie into the basement. They're really reaching now. Here in the wine cellars of Ernest and Julio Gallo. All the best. Uh, this will be the boys' room over here. Eight hours on the dock. Well, good night. <laughs> well, it's, uh, hmm. door's kind of tough. It, uh, oh, <laughs> see, it pulls out. I'm sorry. Ugh. Oh, crap, again. No. Yes. No, it can't be. Yes, it can. Ugh. Oh, no, she looks like me. How could 
this have happened. I took every precaution. Wash my hands. Medical school. That's it. Medical school. Cripes, I've turned her into a slee stack. Put that side against the wall. Well, dear, I've got some bad news. Your modeling career's down the toilet. Ah, uh, mind if I skip dinner? I'm a bit off my food. Well, may I say how sorry I am, and small mistake with your chart. Uh, look on the bright side. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, Don't be discouraged, Charles. Huh? You'll succeed. All these years of study and hard work can't go unrewarded. Yeah, sure, whatever. Mm. Yeah. Ooh. Good morning, Chris. Mark? Good morning, Doctor. Doc? I'm going on upstairs. Grace, I'll oh, see you. Oh, Bunyan, up. where's your blue ox? <laughs> mm -hmm. Will you come into the common room, my dear? I'd like to talk to you. Nice. My dear, you are to be congratulated. Your condition is improved. If you continue in this manner, you'll be entirely well in no time. I hope so. Come and sit down. Mr. Mallon. Tell me, Grace, do you care how your skin looks? Look out for the snack bowl. Oh. What does a young couple talk about when they walk in the garden? I'm afraid I'm a little too old to remember. Many things. Mostly about Natalie. Really? Well, what about her? Mark seems worried about her. Why? He seems to think she's ill or something. Nonsense, my dear. She made a perfect recovery, and I released her. I drove her to the train this morning myself. She left rather early, so she asked me to make her goodbyes. I'm so happy for her. Goodbye. She looks like Irene Ryan, but... Wait. Oh. You've made such fine progress, I... I hate to have anything stand in your way. Look, John, just take a doctor, seat and I sit down. limit your association with Mark. Why? Well, this... Is... <laughs> How I phrase it will sound harsh to you, but... I'm a Nazi. Oh, that Mark does sound harsh, man. doesn't it? Dangerous. Yes, very dangerous. There's no telling what he might do. I don't understand. My dear. Yeah, come on, scooch over. Yeah, yeah that's better. Oh, just get it over with and sit Mark on my is lap. a sick man. He's suffering an advanced persecution complex. Any incident might provoke him into committing an act of violence. I'm watching him carefully and trying to help. That is brutal. Help terrible. too, my dear. How can I help? By avoiding any unnecessary conversation. Then he'll be free of any entangling emotions which might harm him. I'll do as you ask, Doctor. Good. We must look after you too, my dear. You're so good to me, Dr. Conway. As I should be. I'll you scratch your eyes out. Care. One so lovely as you should have the understanding and protection of a friend. But above all, you must disregard anything Mark may tell you. I understand, Doctor. Now, I'm just going to sit on the ottoman, then I'll be done. I'm glad others think for me. Just a little bit nervous, a little bit chubby. Light, 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 please. He looks like the cat that ate the canary. Here, use my Ronson. Works every time. <coughs> oh, and she just puts it out. What's the point of that? Leave that girl alone. What does that mean? Grace, leave her alone. You're sounding like a jealous woman. That's exactly what I am, Charles. I love you, and I'm not going to have anything come between us. <laughs> Sharon. This is new. Sharon. Two people striving for such a great scientific achievement should not be quarreling. Nothing should ever come between us. Except my hand puppet. Charles. Yes? It's Why can't she be our next subject? She's almost a perfect specimen, and you said we needed a good subject for our next experiment. Not yet. Why not? It isn't the right time, but be assured, when the time comes, I shall not hesitate. Okay, right time now? Is it time yet? Now let's join our friends in another part of the house. Slow, slow, blink, blink, slow. My dinner with Andre had more locations than this film. Nice red room. No way, foosball. They got everything. Wow. Bumper pool. Adolf Hitler on vibes. Swing your elbow. Slow, slow, plink, plink. Plink, plink. Hello, sub basement. <laughs> <laughs> 
I could put a workshop down here. Well, you know, as long as I'm down here, I'll bring up some corn relish. Oh, yeah. Maybe some of that bread and butter pickle stuff. Mm -hmm. Watermelon oh. rind pickles. Those oh, are so good. Oh, I love those. Good. Those are really good. Got good. some pickled eggs, maybe. Oh, pickled punks. Mrs. Bates? Mrs. Bates? Hey, man. You know, he's. I think he's looking for Dave Lennox. Oh, of course. That would follow. Looks kind of like David Jansen. Ah, God, I can't get the door open. Ah. Oh, Sam, you're in there. Hmm. Well, I had one of these when I was a kid. It's a grandpa, I think. Duh, I then turn the light up. I'm resting. Yeah, those Minnesotans are so stoic. Well, I thought that would scare me a lot worse than it did. I was pretty cool through that. I probably have bad dreams. Well. Oh, good thing there's a dissolve in the staircase. Makes it easier. Are uh, we knocking this movie? What do you want? Two guesses. I'm sorry to break in like this, but it's my only chance to prove I'm telling you the truth. Please get out. But don't you understand I'm trying to help you? Look, I've got positive proof. Proof you'll have to believe. Please leave me alone. Look, I don't have time to argue with you. Here, put on this robe and come with me. Well, strolling to park one day. Oh, this night's over. You're going to be convinced I'm right. <sighs> what is this, a Three Stooges all of a sudden? There was a man here not ten minutes ago. Mark, please take me back upstairs. I tell you, he was right here. Mark, this is getting boring. Mark, please. No, Grace, not until we find that guy. Cover your shame. Oh, you know, I do love these fantasy suites. Hey, are we in the jungle room or the Tarzan room? Well, you gotta admit, it's really creepy down here. Creepy, creepy. Creeperelli. Creeperoony. Oh, ooh. Uh, oh, Natalie! It's Natalie! Oh. Sissy Spacek. Wow, no, I really am hotter than her. Yeah, that's Natalie. Natalie Weir. Oh, She's been jerked. Ooh. Easy now, you've got to take a look at yourself. I'm sorry you had to see her like this, but now maybe you'll believe me. How could he? Oh, because he had some extra mozzarella lying around, you know? <laughs> Gonna make some garlic face. <laughs> Yeah, uh, close the door. It'll keep her fresh. At least keep the odor in. Well, oh, I'm really tired. Good night. Oh, Natalie. Grace. Grace, we haven't time to think about that now. We've got to figure some way to get you out of this house. How about the front door? I'm so hey. afraid. I know. Now, listen. When I go out of this room, you lock the door and don't open it for anybody until I get back. You understand? Not for anybody. I won't, Mark. Okay. I'll look like me. Oh, we better go. Lock the door. Lock your car. Take your keys. What in the... Oh, you guys. Which results in creativity. Yeah, we thought we could shake off our own cabin fever by playing a little game. Yeah, but uh, most of our games are missing their pieces. So we combined them to yeah. make our own game based on this week's movie. Want to help us play a game? Sure, what can I do? Well, we're all set up. You can read the directions. Yeah. Oh, these are right okay. The all right. Oh, I can tell you guys put these... It's kind of an amalgam of a bunch of different yeah, they're instructions. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Equipment. A uh, game board showing the many rooms of John Carradine's unearthly mansion. Get that. that looks good. Yeah, hold on. Okay, each player chooses a colored token or marker. Oh, 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 I'm the shoe. I'm always a shoe. Dibs okay. on the shoe. Okay. I need the iron. Shoe. I got the iron. I don't want to pick this okay, thing. Okay, you're the iron. Ah, and the iron. I'll be what playing my Captain Kirk King <laughs> from my Franklin Mint Collection chess set. Oh, I forgot there. about that one. Okay, what's next? Guy. Oh, okay. oh, firsties. We roll for firsties. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. right. Each player rolls the dice in the... Tor Johnson, top o -matic. O -matic. After the okay, first player has been uh, selected, but before you remove his pituitary gland, the player to his or her left loses one turn 
and then proceeds to go. Right, so we can so start let's, go. We so can roll let's out. And then yeah. let's go right Each into it. player starts out with a billion dollars and half a dozen hotels, but immediately loses them when they dump Havana uh, for Marla. Marla. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So let's go, so, let's go, let's roll the dice. Let's go. Right in there. The player Pop landing on a plot stopper square must go back to the beginning of the movie yeah. or play the organ for five minutes. All players must uh -huh. stay within the boundaries of the house. Players mm -hmm. going outside the house or in any way suggesting another location put the film over budget and must forfeit one turn right. and pay the player to his or her right. The sum not equal to net points made on the back, back end of the deal. Right. Okay, okay. No, so okay, spin, let's roll, roll, uh, here we now, go, pop a mat, play, No, hold on. Oh. Players caught on the stairway lose one turn. Uh -huh. Players caught in a meaningless two-shot with John Carradine lose, lose one, one turn. turn. Yeah. Okay. Players who lose one turn lose, lose one, one turn. turn. Okay, okay let's players go. Who yeah, lose, lose, players, go. Wait a second. Players who oh, lose the breakfast me. argument with the palooka advance to the woman's bedroom. Uh -huh. Palooka is making advances on the woman lose, lose one, one turn. turn. Thank okay. you, Joel. You know, we wrote these rules so we know. Yeah. We can just okay. get to them as a go. Let's go. Right. Here we okay. go. Okay. Hold, on. Hold on. Dialogue on. cards. Oh, players landing on the dialogue box minutes. must draw one card. Players must then read a passage of Dialogue. Yeah, but you don't yeah, need to do that because we'll, do that that when we get to yeah. we come around to the dialogue cards. Okay. Over. We'll land on that square oh, and then. Oh my right. God. Okay, hold on. Here it is. Okay. Dialogue. Here we go. As John Carradine. Let's see okay. here. I'm glad to hear you're willing to help. You're a clever young man. I've decided you can be of assistance to me. Pretty good Carradine. Man. Yeah. I'm real handy to have around, especially if you need someone to bandage okay. a gunshot wound. John Kerry. Okay, uh, that's not exactly what I had in Joel, mind. On, I said last play. night that we'd have hey, a little hey, talk. Hey, Joel, the, the commercial sign light is flashing. Let's out, just listen. play the John game. Kerry's what would be so wrong with just I don't don't just leave. I've dedicated my life to a project that most Please, scientists Mister, can have we considered back? beyond the realm of possibility. Believe me, it's not impossible to the true scientist. Hey, hmm. why didn't you guys wait? Because you were just reading the record. Hmm, missing a balustrade there. Tour like new lunchbox. Uh, Tour's wearing a wooden kimono. Hey. Hey, Tor, how come you're coughing so bad? <laughs> <laughs> no, That's a great... <laughs> Tor deep into recycling. Tisket, tasket, green yellow casket, pun! <laughs> Did I just see a casket go by? Hey, I can't believe it. They're outside. Yep. Whoa, whoa. Under the spreading chestnut tree, the village smithy stands. He's wearing Berkies. Uh, uh, mulch good for garden. The Rich one, the two. I don't like this place, see? Yeah, it gives me the creeps, see? Ugh. Yeah, this place gives me the willies. I'm gonna blow. Yeah. A two, oh, dog, make me lose count. Mr. Lobo rising. Doo -doo. Uh, g -g 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 he didn't notice me, huh? I'll just go out and finish his jobs for him. Uh, he won't know who did it then. Yeah, back off, you mutt. Da kitty! <laughs> that sure was swell, man. This joint has class. Yeah. Uh, back to work. Uh, uh, one. Uh, two. Alas, poor York. I knew him, Horatio. Duh. Two. This is what happens when you sign with William Morris. Two. Man, this is the life. John Bowser Bauman. Yeah. Uh -huh. What do you, what do you, I had to pop you one. What do you want? Daddy, let's get one thing straight. 
I didn't yeah, have you complain. You're in a jam, and I want to get you out of there. Give me the straight poop. Help. Yes, you do. Now, listen to me. Yeah, what's with the Conway's grabbing? What gives? Crazy uh... experiments here. He plans to use all of us as guinea pigs. Uh, you can't get I believe it. All right, don't. But stop and think, Danny. For once, really think. What's become of Natalie? Where is she? Nah, what's you're loco. You're screwy. Now, if I had time, I'd take you downstairs and show you. I've seen her. She's in the cellar, and I've seen what Conway's done to her. Yeah. He's turned her into a... Well, a God knows what. She's all twisted. Her face looks like something out of a nightmare. Yeah, real sad sack, you know? Why would he do a thing like that to Natalie? He's who a made man. Why? Nothing matters to Conway but his crazy ideas. And believe me, Danny. He's who do I tell you? It's only a sample of what he'll do to you, me, or anybody else he gets his hands on. Yeah, yeah, he's rotten. All right. Come on, let's blow. All right, well, what can we do about it? You can save your neck. You can get out of this house before it's too late, before Conway turns you into some kind of a horrible freak. How? Yeah, skip the pattern, grab oh, these skitties. I've already tried. I know, but don't worry about that. You do what I tell you, you'll get out all right. Yeah, just talk fast, it's see? 1245. You go to bed and pretend you're asleep, and exactly 2 o'clock you come downstairs. Grace and I will meet you there. Yeah, sure thing. Shut eye. That's a ticket. Okay. 2 o'clock. I'll be there. Jake, I'll hit the sack and catch some Z's. If you're on time. Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. You know, stamps are fun. Hmm. Who's playing my Hammond? Oh, fuss is dripping. You're not about to start knocking again, are you? Yeah, I'll make like I'm sawing logs. <laughs> he even sleeps crabby. Chris Isaac. Oh. Nothing, dear. Just checking the joists. Okay, watch the lady. We're gonna switch him around. Watch her up. Oh, kind of high for a bathtub drain, eh? Mm hmm Manuel! Polly! Man, stairs. This movie would have been a lot shorter if they filmed it in a Rambler. Mm-hmm. He should just drink a glass of milk and go to bed. Yeah. Take some an extra night and sleep. Somebody's knocking again. I hate that. I think he's more confused than we are. I gotta back up and read the script. Yeah, it's like vaudeville in slow motion. <laughs> uh, let's see. Scene 13. Let's stop for the day. I'm pooped. No! Don't do that. I'm in a horror movie and you sneak up on me. Have you just been downstairs? No, I've been in my room. Why? Are you sure? Of course. Is there something wrong, Charles? Nah, someone stole the strawberries. Nothing. Nothing at all. Charles, I'm worried about you. You've been working too hard. I got the collar on Anne Boleyn here. Can help you? Yes, please leave me alone. Why don't you try to get some rest? You'll feel so much better. And we can film Perhaps it. Perhaps you'd like a glass of warm milk. I'm not a child. I won't be pampered or mothered. I like them strawberry quick you and need some cookies, rest, though. Charles. I need nothing that I do not wish to need. Good night, Sheriff. Uh, you want to unpack that one for us, Grandpa? There's that mug. It's blacker than a parson's hat down here. Jeepers. Yeah, keep that mug a shine if you don't show. And the dolly, man, she was poured into that dress. I tie of Cuttlingo. Hmm. What time is it? Yeah. Must be almost time for his meds. Hey, it's the stiff and his dolly. Yeah. Good boy, Danny. Now, listen, you and Grace take the main road into town. Remember, stay in the shadows till you're clear of the house. Once I'll take the low safe. road and be in Scotland I before you. I'll tell you both to move as fast as you can. What about you, Mark? Well, I'll make sure Conway doesn't follow. I'll catch up to you later. You sure you'll be okay? Yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. Now get out of here. Oh, and Danny. Yeah, take good care of her. Huh? Yeah, okay. Yeah, she's a real sweet kid, you know? Well, so, a makeout party, huh? How come I'm not invited? I'm going to repay my hospitality. Lobo, Sharon, thank you. No, thank you. Oh, no, thank you. No, thank you. I think your team is very clever, but I can't enjoy watching my kindnesses abused. I suppose I should have turned you over to the police in the first place. Would it surprise you all to know that Mark is an escaped killer and that Beef, to whom I offered sanctuary, 
That wouldn't surprise me. And as for you, Esmeralda... The fact that you turned against me is the greatest shock of all. That could have been a convincing story, Doc, but now it's too late. Hey, it's Bob and Carol and Tor and Alice. Them really... <laughs> Take him away. Downstairs, Lobo. Sharon, see that they're secure and then join me upstairs. Yeah, Baldy, get the get out of my backside. Not you, my dear. I have something special going, planned Mark. for you. Upstairs. Slowly, walk real slow. That's it. <laughs> We're watching down by law all of a sudden. Keep them here till I come back. Understand? Yes, I keep them here till they get back. The, no, no. Benny, take a look at this. Take a look at these hands. Night, it's mother. Another... Oh, Ick. thanks for showing me that. Yeah. Follow my play. I've got an idea. Watch yourself. Sure thing. Time for the old dipsy doodle. Hey, Routine Curly. 55. Seen a sleepy beauty in there? You know, just like in a storybook. Hmm. Where the girl is real pretty. Like Natalie. Yeah, real attractive girl. Put into a time. dress, yeah. She had a spell put on her by this giant in the castle. Oh, this giant? Now, this giant, he's got a bull. And the bull's name is Ferdinand. Ferdinand? Yeah. Of course, hooked on phonics. He doesn't like the beautiful red cape that the giant has. So he tries to get it. But the giant, he just takes the cape and he waves it right in front of the bull. Ah, he's a Toriador. <laughs> and he rushes right at the cape. But the giant, he just takes the cape and he throws it over the bull. We do all the voices. Oh. You know, that story's got a better plot than this movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, no wound, huh? Hey, we need a wound. Make up. Wait, don't leave Tor hanging. What happens to Ferdinand? Go on, Larry. Yeah, all right, go ahead. I'll follow you. Are you sure you can make it alone? Yeah, yeah. I'll be yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, sure. On. I'm swell. Now scram. Oh, yeah. She's well under. Prepare her. Hey, they're going to give her a nose like Latoya. Right. I mean, like Michael. What's the deal? Stay right there, Conley. You think that gun is really necessary? Yeah, it finishes the ensemble. It's so much easier if you put the gun away. Maybe so, but you keep your hands on top of the desk. Very well, Mark. Oh. <gasps> Wait a minute. Pretty girl, young girl, old man, man with a gun. The situation seems to have altered slightly. More than slightly. I've got the gun. Warm gun. Makes me By happy. Way, how long do you think you could go on destroying people before somebody stopped you? Oh, I don't Why? know. 20, Why? 30 Why? years. This from you, a killer. A man hunted by the police. I was about to give the world the gift of eternal life. Teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. You mutilated innocent human beings. You transformed them into creatures so hideous they'd be better off dead. We I, I did deny that. Nothing. Who are you to question the usefulness of my experiments in relation to the future? Who are you to judge? I'm I was in state of civilization in my hand. A happy world about to be thrown open to a humanity that would die. Not you nor anyone else can stop me. Save that for the jury. Yeah, save it for the final scene. Oh, but of course. You're a bailiff. I must admit you took me in completely. A police. Never thought. You weren't supposed to. Let's go. Yeah. Now, I suppose I have no choice. Oh, now, how often are you going to need a button like well, that? I got an espresso machine. I don't use it much, but it's nice to have. You got a point there. Now, where'd he get his flashlight? Duh. A four track, a waffle iron, and sausages. They're recording breakfast? Oh, good. Operator, this oh. is an emergency. Get me to the sheriff's office, quick. There's an outside. There's an outside. Hello, Casey. This is a code three. Lieutenant Houston. Jim? Look, Jim, Jimmy, 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 put your mother on. No, no, don't hang up. Jimmy, no. Nope. Yeah, they know where I am. Now get him rolling. I'm going to love with myself. I love me. Van Dam and Van Dam in Van Dam Yankees. Ooh. It's Confuso Vision again. Working. There's a scientist on a spree, and he's skinny as can be. Oh. No nuts! Lobo has the keys. Well, go on inside and get a coat hanger. Come on. I have 
have no idea where any of these people are. Oh, uh, one Adam 12. Movie needs resuscitation. See the movie. Reagan! Yeah. What's the pitch, Mark? Conway, he was out there somewhere. I, I lost him. No one outside. You better split up. Kennedy, you go that way. I stay off the sauce. Yeah, I'm going to check that out. All right, good deal. Come on, let's go. Come on, Otis. You know how to do that. Otis, come on. Ah, the key to the plot. Well, why is that mirror at belly button level? It's a navel gazer. No. You're dead. I'm in. 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 Oh, well, thank you. I didn't get you anything. I know you're dead. I told everybody. Uh -oh. That's for the buck. Dying is easy. Comedy is hard. Let's dance. I'll lead. Dip. Oops. Ooh. Blame it on the boss and over. Bravo! Uh, Reagan? I dropped it. That it looks like somebody saved this Yeah, bring in a meat bag. Put this palooka in the chiller. Yeah. Who's this guy? Someone named Jedro. Conway tried to bury him alive. Hmm. You know, it's ironic. I pulled him out of his grave and he ends up like this. I can sense the irony. Oh, and this is Conway's assistant. Yeah, the milkman found her. Gilchrist, what did you do with Miss Thomas? She's in the lab. George, get the cuffs on. Captain, you'd better come down to the cellar. No! What is it? No, no, not the I cellar. told you, never believe it. Okay, let's go. Wipe that chocolate milk off your lip. I, oh my, would I... Oh, forget it. Grace. Wake up. Come on. Snap out of it. Come on. Grace before every meal. Uh, amen. <laughs> oh, it's a test pad, and they temporarily lost their signal. Listen, it's all right. Everything's all right now. There's nothing more to worry about. Sleep! Oops. I've checked him. He's dead. He's stiff. This way, sir. See, there's one in here, and then I found another one in here. This place is just crawling with stuff you wouldn't believe. It's... Hey, there's another movie in here. Oh, it's the cast for Quest for Fire. They saved the best for last. Oh, oh Brian Bosworth and Ben Davidson. Oh. Ian Anderson, Aqualong. Oh. Get Michael Jackson on the phone. He may want to buy one of these guys. Well, it's a good thing we have institutions that will take good care of them for the rest of their lives. The birth of the World Wrestling Federation. Okay, so who mucks out the cages? Oh, 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 light a match. Oh, really? Do you yeah. forever. Uh, let's just pretend we didn't see this thing of the paperwork, huh? <laughs> yeah. It smelled like a monkey house, and then I knew for sure that it was... Lieutenant, who is this? My new gal. Lieutenant. <laughs> Captain Reagan, this is Miss Grace Thomas. She was one of Conway's patients. Grace Thomas? <laughs> how glad I am to see you, young lady. You had us dragging the bay for two days. We almost had you marked off as a suicide. Oh. Suicide? Yeah. Well, that's a good way to explain her disappearance. Captain, you better get out a pickup on a Dr. Lauren Wright. Got my own pickup right here. Thomas oh. here. He probably brought the others, too. Yeah, I'll get out a call right away. Come on, Miller. We have a lot of work to do. Life's funny, huh? Lieutenant Houston. Mark. Oh, Lieutenant Mark. Mark. Will you please take me home? Yeah. Yeah, of course I will. That's part of my job. I see. Hey. How about breakfast? Should I call you or just roll over and nudge you? <laughs> Hi, Campbell. Oh. He's off Let's the go. Lab. Let's we go. have liftoff. Woo. Yes, brought to you by the people of Cartoon House. <laughs> Holy buck, 
Rockets. What a cock and bull hoodoo picture show that was, eh, fellas? Yeah, <laughs> boy, those all mossbacks. Give me the Jim Jam, something awful. Yeah, I'd give that honk up to Nixie, but hey, we're really footing it on the lingo. Yeah, huh? yeah we can ship peg away with a peddless French, eh, pal yeah, of mine? Yeah, we're going <laughs> hi-hat in a big way, fellas, Woo. huh? Hot, Whoa. sweet, and filthy. Yeah, yeah. okay. Woo. Now zip it, you mutton heads. We got a bug letter to sling, okay? Man, ain't that Jake? Yeah, Woo. let's put it. Boosted cam out, okay? Who? Okay, oh. here we go. Ah. It says, says here, it says here, Dear Joel and DeBot. Hey, hey that's, that's me! Right, button it, okay, button it, you gums. Okay, it says here, I have a couple of questions about Tom Soivo. Man. Foist, why can't we see through Tom's head when you guys are watching the movie, oh, even well. though his head is transparent? Huh. Hmm. What, what? And second, how can Tom even watch the movie when he doesn't have any peepers? Well, what, don't what? that beat the Dutch. What, what, yeah, what, yeah, what, what? I think old laughing boy's pulling a fast yeah. one on us. Hey, what, I think. what gives? I ain't no bad pill. Honest, fellas, you've been done a brown. Ah, cut with the baby act. Come so, on, Clyde. This mug was gonna give us the boost, huh? No, I'm gonna no, cut up videos with his old no, pallies. No, Why, no. I ought to... Hey, Crow, routine 27. Ah! <laughs> yeah, 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 we're just pulling your pants, Gumpy. Take it easy. Yeah, boy, oh boy, we really had you by the fat end, pal. Oh, you <laughs> Samson! Yeah. Hey, hey, foot it, boys. His nibs is calling on the other line. So what's it to you, Einstein? Hmm? Look, you bombastic biscuit boy. Any more of this faux dead-end kid's patois, and I'll teach you the real meaning of Lexa... Or... Hey, boss, this is good grub. That Padre, he's not a half bad egg. You know, I could really get into eating grub like this if I could be a junior G-man. Frank, why must you always go on with your little... Hey, boss, do your Leo Gorsi. No, I'm not going to do my... No, I'm not going to do my... Do your Leo Gorsi, come no, on. No, Frank, come Frank, on. once again, I'm going to have to, to kill you. <laughs> You want to run that by me one more time? You'll run that by you one more time. Uh, yeah, you know, kill us. Yeah. Boost, ice, whack, sprag, douse, stifle, 86, uh, slip to Roscoe, chill, dust, yank, toss a little kickshaw, Roger. <laughs> Time for go to bed.